Can you run an entire camper van off a portable power station? You know, something like one of them. With more and more people taking on the absolute epic challenge of converting a van into a livable camper van, but they're all too scared to do the electric side of things, can this be done? Let's test it. We're going to be using the All Powers S2000 Pro. No, this isn't just another brand deal that you see another YouTuber doing. I actually believe in this brand solely because if you look under there, I've already got one. It's my portable power station of choice. So why not use that? We've got a whole array of different items to try out. Everything from a 1400 watt air fryer. Yes, I'm going to cook my dinner soon. We've got a coffee machine. We've got a 2200 watt iron. We've got a beard trimmer hair cutter thing because I need to have a shave. We've got power tools and most importantly, oh, look at me poor drone. I crashed it the other day. Here's the footage. So I was dying to get this shot of the two vans revealing, then lift it up in the air and turn it slightly whilst reversing to reveal the old man of Coniston. This was on a recent trip with Jordan and Annalise. I couldn't see round the corner, but the drone somehow decided it wanted to reverse into a tree. Yeah, it wasn't too bad though. Let's unbox it. So inside the box, straight away at the top, You've got your claim, your warranty, instruction booklet, all that sort of stuff. In here, you put your fingers in the little holes, give it a good pull. Boof, there's the power unit. It's got a little bit of weight into it, but pretty much that's it. You've also got all your bag with all your wires, all those sorts of stuff. We'll run through that later when we go on to how to charge this. And over here, you've got a waterproof cover for when you're charging it in the rain. It's not a bad looking unit, is it? It suits sort of like a rugged appearance. Have you seen like the big bolts, the big handles? And it pretty much looks near enough exactly the same as the S2000 V2 that I've got. Let's go through all the data information and all the wattage details about it first. It's going to be quick because I want to cook my dinner quickly. So you've got a lithium ion battery that's 1500 watt hour. So you've got enough battery storage to actually live for a week. You sort of live for a week and then you can recharge it and you can constantly keep recharging it as many times as you need to keep it up at 100%. And you can always use your air fryer basically. That's done quite easily with the four plug sockets at the top. Now, if you're in the US, you have a different type of plug it comes with, but these will run up to 2,400 watts of power out of them, which peaks at 4,000 watts. So, so far we've learned it's a power, it's battery storage, but also it's got an inverter in there, a pure sign 2,400 watt inverter. You've got two different USB-C ports. Now, this is a new modern thing for these power banks because USB-C is now the new USB or the micro USB. They run five volts to five amps and then 20 volts to five amp. You can run up to 100 watts out of them ones and then you've got four USBs down here. Again, they're all slightly different voltages and different ampages. It's all here in the instruction booklet because that's what I'm currently reading it off now. Pretty much in my past experience with this one, again, you've got the four down the bottom there. Everything I've plugged into them has worked perfectly fine and haven't tripped it out. If you do trip it out, again, just turn it off, turn it on and it will work perfectly. We've got a 12 volt socket just there again for any sort of cigarette lighter related inquiries. And here, I don't know what this is i'm going to be completely honest with you i don't know what that is now my old one doesn't have it it just has a little upgraded thing there this says recreational vehicle use only and i'm not too sure what it is i would assume you'd be able to like plug in your recreational vehicles to charge them most of the time when i'm just charging up my e-bike i just use the 240 ac sockets inside the bag you've got three cables you've got one here for the solar panels you can plug into a solar panel on the xt60 socket just there and that's for I mean, stupid plane. I bet that's quite cool flying around up there, actually. Imagine the view. Especially when you look at the view that I've currently got right now. How cool is that? He's gone now. Let's get back to it. You've got three cables. This is your solar cable. They come with MC4 connectors, so you can plug to a solar panel or a portable solar panel or a folding portable solar panel. I've picked up the 400-watt solar panel with this one. Not because I'm going to use it, because I can't really have two units so i'm going to use my old trusty faithful and this will be given away to a subscriber around about the christmas time so make sure you hit that subscribe button this socket just here goes into the xt60 socket just there and you can charge via 650 watts worth of solar you've got your standard ac socket nothing actually special about that again it can charge up to 1500 watts according to the paperwork and that plugs into the back of the unit just there then you've got your in-car charger you can plug it into an in-car charger and that side again plugs into the xt60 socket there so from a charging point of view can you use this as your primary source of electric for a camper van conversion and i think yes let's face it this you can either plug this into a portable solar panel or what's not stopping you having a solar panel on the roof of your van 
plugged into the MC4 connectors straight down into this socket just here, straight into there permanently. So whenever the sun, it automatically keeps charging up. Or why not have this just plugged into your car battery every single time you need to charge it, just to bump up the power. Or, <laughs> again, plug this into an electric hookup. Say you've got plugs dotted around, but they're only active when you've got when you're plugged into an electric hookup just plug it straight in keep it plugged in boom it will charge this then like me every single time that i go and plug something in i just plug this in there you go 65 percent. i've got nothing going out because there is absolutely nothing plugged in now the first thing i'm going to charge with this unit is the drone batteries i really need to get them charged up so i can fix the drone after i crashed it and then we can take it for a little test flight later so i'm just going to leave it up there perfectly fine that's what i broke just a couple of the propellers just got nicked let's start with power tools we get the plug we plug it straight into the top just there. We press and hold the AC button just down there. It lights up. We should be able to now use this. And it's only using 19 watts. Oh, 100 watts. We have now got the coffee machine again plugged in. The AC plugs are turned on. We go with this one first. It goes in the top just like that. Look at this, mum. I know how to make coffee. So we'll press that. It should start working any second. And then we'll keep an eye on the wattage. Look at that. 1550 watts going out of this unit to be able to power a coffee machine. And it's actually doing a really good job doing it too. Now remember, we started this at 58% battery. That's because I've used little bits here and there just to sort of get used to it. And the whole time that's working, the batteries on the drone are still charging. We're setting up the iron for the next experiment once the coffee's finished. I'm quite nervous about this one because that is a 2200 watt iron. Is it going to short out the whole unit? Now, again, we turn the plugs on, press and hold. We'll unplug the coffee machine because we're finished with that one. So the fan's kicked in. You can see the little whirly symbol just down there to say the fan's kicked in. That's to keep it nice and cool. There we go, instantly. 1900. Oh, is that going to raise actually up to 2200 watts? Let's find out. The light's just gone off and the output wattage has dropped. The only output wattage now is, again, the drying batteries. I can't wait anymore, I'm starving. We've got the air fryer, the air fryer's plugged in. It works. Let's get the pizza in. It's just a couple of little pizzas that I'm having. Nothing absolutely special. So, this will be interesting to see. Let's up the, temp uh, the temperature, I want it at 180. And the time, we'll go for 15 minutes. Only because I can put one in for seven minutes and then the next one in for seven minutes. It will be interesting to see how much of percentage of a battery this actually uses on 15 minutes of use at 1400 watt output let's face it that's the big decider if this is gonna last for a week it'll be absolutely amazing with me using that all the time but if it's only gonna last a day and you have to charge it up every day is it really going to be useful let's find out i got busy sorting out emails and stuff <laughs> so uh let's see oh yeah baby you never can just have one. Let's go in with the second one. And we should, six minutes left at 100 and, is it 100? No, we'll drop it back down to 180. There we go. And we'll see what this is doing. Look at that. So that's used 10% of power for around about 10 minutes at 1350 watts. I have just come up with a little idea that I want to know if you guys have actually done. I'll explain it more once I've thought about it a little bit more and once I've had my food, but it might be quite cool goes along the lines of can you use this instead of a, a leisure battery so with this being a PCN it's got the solar charger the in-car charger the mains charger can I use this solely as my power like let's say I put a solar panel on the roof that's dedicated just to that so the solar keeps that topped up all the time I could easily have it plugged into a 240 hookup so that it's again it's always got charge and then I can go from the plug sockets on an extension lead straight up to here so i've got like a pop-up plug extension thing and i can just plug anything into it that i need to and then once i've used it the sun and everything's just going to keep it topped up again or with it being a pure sign 2400 watt inverter built into it can i somehow hook it up to my leisure battery via maybe so on my leisure battery i've got a 240 plug a 12 volt socket so can i basically fit another two uh, another 12 volt socket going straight round into that to keep this topped up from my leisure battery my solar panels can keep my leisure battery up to scratch so then 
any leftover solar will go straight into this and then I just run an extension lead straight off this to wherever I need it to go and just leave it turned on all the time. Ah. Use a power station instead of an inverter because let's face it, that's an inverter, MPPT solar charge control and basically a DC to DC charger too. Are you a brown sauce kind of person, barbecue sauce or ketchup kind of person? Let's have a look and see how much power it used for two pizzas. We're down to 30%, so basically 20% for 20 minutes. That means you can use the air fryer for 20 minutes a day for five days before the battery goes dead. I don't know. Is that enough for you guys? Could you use one of them instead of a leisure battery? Let's try it on the 400 watt portable solar panel. Again, this is going to be an ad giveaway, so make sure you do subscribe. It's as straightforward as a 400 watt foldable portable solar panel. We are in a really low light condition. It's connected via the MC4 connector straight into the power bank and we're gaining 15 watts through basically no sun at the moment. If it had directional sun pointing straight on it, that would be upwards of over 300 watts worth of solar panels. It all tucks away into this nice little pocket and it comes with extra cables. So we have got these cables here. You can plug it onto the solar panel straight to your battery if you've got a dead battery. Leave it for an hour or so, it'll have enough power to jump you to get you going on the road. It's not a bad little setup, is it? What do you guys think? To fold the panel away, it's literally just a case of fold it around. The legs actually fold in on themselves. Just keep going. It has got a little bit of weight to it, but I'm sure that's perfectly acceptable. It clips together and stores away in your van perfectly. My mind's still absolutely whirling about using the... Not that one. Because remember, that one's a giveaway to subscribers, but using that one as a inverter. Hmm. The sun's about to set, so I'm going to get down and do some research into whether I can do that little plan or not. I'm going to plug it into a few cigarette lighters around the van and just see what happens. And You never know, that might be a future video. If you're new around here, please subscribe so that you have a chance of winning that unit with a 400 watt solar panel.